This is supposed to be um, holiday time. And one of the things I am uh, looking at is that there are places in the world that are canceling Christmas. In Peshua, the Christians have canceled Christmas celebrations in uh, solidarity with all those children. In uh, Sierra Leone, they've canceled Christmas celebration because of Ebola. Though it's not in the news, it still is really, really bad. And just looking at the issues that keep coming up. Here we are, it's Christmas, and you'd think people would be going to peace, but war and anguish and horror is coming right all the time. There isn't a break. We're not taking a break. There's no break. And I've spoken about the Taliban and my image of Taliban men. And I'd like to say in regard to that, that four square again is on humiliated. Humiliated. So if we look at Peshua and those, all those children being killed, it was because the Taliban felt Humiliated. They took revenge. They did it on purpose. They knew what they were doing. They knew exactly they were going to get back. And what better way to get back than by killing children? We're just killing children everywhere. In Gaza, we're killing children. And so, though it should be, oh wow, it's Christmas. And what I wrote in the card was, things were bad then, in all those holidays. If you look at why Hanukkah happened, it was because the temple was destroyed and they needed eight days to create and make the oil for the lamp, and the lamp had to be going all the time. And the miracle was that the oil that they had, which was only for one day, lasted for eight. So it wasn't a happy time. And why was Christ born? Because it was going because it was so happy. No, because things were really bad. He was basically the sacrificial lamb. He was the sacrifice. He came in as a sacrifice. So we celebrate the birth, but that's what it's about. It was for us. It was for us. So are we willing, I've been screaming and yelling for several months now, are we willing to actually commit to make a shift? So that at least we're not accomplices, we're not contributing to the mess, and that we are in fact contributing to the solution. And it's too hard? No. Reading about what happened to those children in Peshawar the other day, <coughs> that's too hard. Reading what's going on in Gaza, that's too hard. Reading about why and how people are dying of Ebola, that's too hard. Reading about how 
Eve in this country, people are starving, people are being mistreated, we are losing our rights. I actually said somebody, something to somebody, I said, you better open your mouth now because you're going to lose your freedom of speech soon. You better open your mouth now while you have your chance. Notice, if you criticize anything, you're not a patriot. If you criticize this, you're not a that. If you're not, it's all. And we're all apologizing. I'm so sick of reading public apologies for things that shouldn't be apologized for. That don't need apologies. And shouldn't be in the news. I shouldn't know about it. It shouldn't even be available to me to be able, or any of us, to hear about it. We shouldn't even be caring about it. So, humiliated, revered, directed, inflated. That four square, if you look at everybody who's freaking angry, ISIS, America, America is not, they don't want to be, they're God, they guide. They're not humiliating, they're not humiliating people. They're directing. And when we're humiliated, they didn't humiliate us. They were directing us. We don't, they're all conflated. They're all conflated. I respect and revere someone. Do I? Or am I just inflating them? Do they deserve it? Do we even know about revering somebody or something at this point? Are we just also equal? We're also stupid and ignorant. And we can't be prideful anymore. We torture. This country tortures. We torture. They torture. He, she, it tortures. We can conjugate that word for ever. You torture, I torture, we all torture. We need to commit each and every one of us to a shift to God, to surrendering fully, 100% to God, no matter what, no matter what, and it's not the gooey God, it's God, it's consciousness, it's pure love, it's clarity, it's 100%, all times, not just in this room, not just when, ooh, there's Rahim. All the time. We had a sign in the ashram that said, speak as if God were in the next room. Respectful, and there isn't a time that this doesn't happen. And we're on the swing, but we need to be working to not get so low. How low are we going to go before we make that shift back? So our job is to surrender. 
God's going to do it the way God's going to do it. We should not be participants in this. And that means not fighting, resisting the mess. Not resisting the mess. Our job is to not resist God, to love, to be on the side of God. So when I think of the Crusades, how funny was that? It was a religious war and everybody hated it. It was an organizational war. Nobody was on, nobody was with God. They weren't with God. They were with their organization. Christian, Muslim, Jew, Hindu, it's all. Are we the organization <coughs> war? My organization is better than your organization? Or do we want God? Are we with God? Because organizations always coming and going, the, the fad of the organization changes, the charter of the organization changes even in religions you know you think it's oh it's always been really i remember back at the church saint mark where there was this absolutely filthy filthy velvet curtain behind the altar dark velvet curtain. It, had, it was part of Christianity, in case you didn't know. And it had been there forever. It was, when Christ was born, it was there. <laughs> that was how it was looked at. I remember that. Behind that velvet was this beautiful stone, because it was a stone church. Beautiful stone wall. But that filthy, I'm telling you, filthy. I almost felt that the, the velvet had been like pale blue, and now it was dark, maybe. <clears throat> and there was an uproar in the issue of taking it, whether to take it down or not. And that's what we do. We go to wars over the velvet curtain in the back of the altar. How silly we are. And there was an issue that we were to revere that velvet curtain. And somebody didn't want to humiliate the person who had given, because that person was still alive, because they were older than God. <clears throat> so we didn't want to humiliate them. We didn't want to ruin their gift. But you have to keep it. It is everywhere. We bank our principles on silly things. Shift. Love. God. Baba used to say, I think about these children right now when I tell you the story. Bobby 
used to say, you can tear down a mosque, you can bomb a temple, you can destroy a church, but never, never hurt the heart, the human heart. And that act of killing those children the other day, that was done to hurt everybody. It was done on purpose to hurt everybody. We've got to make that move. And let's not retaliate, get back, revenge, justice, justice. So I'm smashing them to get that. That's what they start. We just go back and forth. Hurting. Somebody's got to stop. <coughs> We've got to stop. So I want to take a few minutes right now. Turn in. Burn it up.
wanted to talk and then open to questions. <coughs> you know, the whole thing in the blog was about conflict this week, <coughs> and that conflict isn't such a bad thing. It's the whole thing of coming together. Engagement. Can you engage with love? Can you do conflict with love? That's the engagement that we want to be able to do. Conflict with love. And harmony, that produces harmony within ourselves. The people who then don't want to do any kind and they run from conflict, they end up complacent, inert, and passive. They end up doormats. And it's so sad. Can we go forth with love? Can we address the conflict with love? That's <coughs> what I'd like to see. I would like to see us commit to that. Not be weak, not be passive. Anybody who's been in this room, they know we don't do weak and passive very well here. In your previous blog, that means to do that, we have to be able to be good or stay close to that. Yes. Be willing to do that. Have to be, exactly, have to be willing to be dangerously exposed. Oh my god, I can't do that. I'll be oh my god. And when we finally open our mouths, most of the time, nobody cared. <coughs> nobody cared. And then we also get to see the ones who really did care and that we should have opened our mouths a long time. <coughs> 